Okay. So here's an example. Um, Are you making something up? I am making up as I go. If we ask um, 630 people if they like chihuahuas. <laughs> And uh, 20 people do not. 20 people do. Okay, that's it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like chihuahuas. I don't like any small dog. I, 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 I think when they bark, their, their head has to be like rattling. Like, I didn't like chihuahuas until I got my dog. Does it make your ears? Does it have the, yeah, the sound? Yeah, it's like static. Yeah, there it is. It's called. Static. If we ask 630 people if they like chihuahuas, 20 do. Um, We want to ensure the accuracy of our prediction. Is within one percent using a ninety percent confidence interval. If we ask 630 people if they like chihuahuas and 20 do, we want to ensure the accuracy of our prediction is within 1% using a 90% confidence interval. We could run through it and we could find that maybe this is accurate within 1%. Okay, we could run through this and figure out that this is accurate within 1%. Um, what must our sample size be to guarantee this? So we could run through the entire problem. We could see, is this accurate within 1%? And it may be. But it may not be. So if we want to ensure it, there's a way to calculate it. Because if you ask 630 people, and 20 of them like chihuahuas, and you conducted an accurate study, then theoretically, if you were to double that to 1,260 people, how many people should like chihuahuas? 40. So if you were to increase your sample size, the proportion of people who like chihuahuas should not change if you conducted an accurate survey. Okay, so if you want to ensure the accuracy is within 1% using a 90% confidence interval, what must our sample size be to guarantee this? So, um, we're going to ensure the accuracy of our margin of error, or the accuracy of our prediction is within 1%. That tells us our margin of error. 0.01. We want to be within 1% of being correct. Okay? We want to use a 90% confidence interval. So we're going to use this formula. Margin of error is equal to Z critical standard error of P half. So it's margin of error equals Z critical and then the standard error of P half is P hat, Q hat over N. We don't know the true population proportion. We don't know how many people really like chihuahuas. We don't know P. We're trying to predict it within an accuracy rating of 1% using a 90% confidence interval. So the only thing we know is we know P hat. What's P hat? It's 20 over 630, and okay, someone said it, or a lot of you said it. 0.03. 0.04. 0.0317, right? Yeah, within four. Okay, technically, if you wanted to be guaranteed as close as possible, you would um, use the entire, for P hat, you would just use 20 over 630. And so Q hat, if we wanted to guarantee we were exactly right, rather than using 0 0.0317, we could use uh, 610 out of 630, right? Oh, yeah. If 20 out of 630 are a success, they like chihuahuas, then that would mean 610 out of 630 do not like chihuahuas. These two both add up to 1. So it would be the same as doing 1 minus that. It, it's categorical because it's either they like chihuahuas or they don't like chihuahuas. Okay, now we're dealing with the number of people, but it's the number of people that belong to a group. 
So, I mean, if you work this out. Wait, so did we just do quantitative? No. We've been doing that for it gives you 0 0.9683 if you round. And if those two should add up to one, which they do. So we've got P hat, we've got Q hat, uh, Z critical. Uh, I know we've done it in our notes, but if it said a 82% confidence interval, then we wouldn't just be able to look back at our notes for the answer. Z critical, and then we have negative Z critical. We want a 90% confidence interval. So this is 90%. How much total data is outside of that? 10%. 10. 10 so this is 0 0.05, making the p-value 0.95. We go to our chart. We've already done this one. It's 1.65. Z-critical is 1.65. So if we look. We've got Z-critical, we've got P-hat, we've got Q-hat, we've got the margin of error. We've got everything except for the sample size. So we've plugged it in. Now, guys, you're not going to be successful in this class by trying to tackle memorizing all the formulas. So you could technically just take all of that and just plug it in right here. I mean, it's always going to work. 20 out of 630 times 610 out of 630 divided by 0 0.01 over 1.65 meters squared. That will give you the answer. So basically all you have to do is find each variable, and then if you memorize that, you're good. Is that what you're telling me? It's going to be one question out of 20 questions on the test. I wouldn't even bank on And every question I mean, is going to have be different easy. formulas. It's going to be better for you to understand how to manipulate one formula rather than to try to memorize five formulas. It is better to do one question with different five than to do five different things. <laughs> <laughs> he has a saying up there. It's like whatever thing. It's like it's easier to do one question five ways than to do five questions one way. That's how you better do that. <laughs> I just quoted in a very mocking voice. <laughs> and the same process is going to fall through. To get in by itself, you've got to do 1.65 over. I think Miss Holly and me have discussed about how everyone wants to just memorize a bunch of formulas. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not. That's not how you learn. It's how you memorize. Guys, there's this thing called Bloom's taxonomy. What's that? It's a hierarchy of learning. In order to understand something, you first must have the ability to be willing to memorize stuff. In order to apply it, you have to first understand it. So if you bank on just memorizing, yes, that will ensure that you understand how to do some things, but if you just understand or just you bank on just memorizing stuff, you will never be able to apply it. Okay. See, I bang on. Oh, and, yeah. and then, and then, in order to, you've got to understand how to apply this stuff to be able to be creative, <laughs> use it to evaluate someone else, or analyze. I can do the bottom one. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, if you're dependent upon just remembering facts, it will only give you the foundation to understand. It will not give you the foundations that you need to apply. How does one understand? Like, how do I, how do I even understand to understand? Like, it's just, it's just a matter of drone kill, getting yourself conditioned to being used to it. So, solving this, divide by 1.65. 0.01 divided by 1.65 equals the square root. <clears throat> to get rid of the square root, you square. <clears throat> There's a shortcut that we actually learned in trigonometry, and that's if you have something, and we might have covered, I think we covered it in house number two, if you have, but if you're depending on, on memorizing stuff, yeah. When you have a variable on the bottom, rather than moving it off the bottom and then moving the other item over, if you have a variable on the bottom, you just take it and the opposing side and let's switch them. Okay, it's a very useful concept in trigonometry. When the variable is on the bottom, you take it and the opposing side of the equation and you just switch them. It's called proportion. It's cross multiply. Okay, you can multiply them diagonally across an equation. So these two can just be switched, giving us n is equal to 0 0.0317 over 0 
over the margin of error divided by the z critical to be squared. And it probably gives you some ungodly number. Wait, so that's just the next part? Like, that's not just what you're going to You can multiply in over. It's always going to be the same two steps. How do you get the end off the bottom? Times it over. And then how do you get this away from the end? Divide it over. Okay. So it's always going to be the same two steps. Once you get there, you just switch. Yeah, I got 8 to 35. 836.5? Hey, it's tricky. Tricky's a lot. Tricky's a lot. So it's easier. Ah, it just depends. It depends on how your brain start ranking. Some people find geometry is better than, some people find geometry easier than algebra. No. If you found geometry easier than algebra, then yeah, tricky's easier. Okay. Hey, okay. Yeah. Hey, so, n is 836.5. So to guarantee you're accurate within 1% of the actual, you have to ask 836 and a half people. Um, the two up top, can you go ahead and multiply that? You're good. And then I round it to... Which is why you got something slightly different. I just got a little smaller. Yeah, that's okay. The more rounding you do along the way, the more often it's called thread the final answer. I just rounded that one. So if you do